welcome to FPTV New Releases, where it's my pleasure today to be joined by one of my favourite writers, actually, Paul Cornell, uh, the man who's responsible for one of my favourite ever Marvel books, Captain, Amer Captain Britain and MI13. Captain American and MI13, I guess, is the alternate universe version. Captain Britain and MI13, such a great book, Paul. And Thank you. And you've had an amazing career um, oscillating between novels and uh, television and screenplays and comic books. Um, a, a really a kind of multi, you know, multi outlet career, pretty much like no other. So uh, from that jumping off point, we're here to talk about your new comic book series from The Vault, which sounds amazing. Um, I Walk With Monsters. What can you tell us about it, mate? Um, it's a um, horror, we call it heartfelt horror. It's uh, me trying to do the full Stephen King, the idea to talk about something real in the form of fantastical horror. Um, it's drawn amazingly by Sally Cant Cantorino, um, who's doing this extraordinary, real looking Americana, but with amazingly surreal and, and terrifying monsters. Um, it's about um, a young girl, um, a young woman, JC, um, who from a young age um, met um, a man, David, who becomes a monster. And the two of them have formed a partnership where they um, wander the world hunting down um, people who are doing to children what was done to JC in her youth by her family. And um, it's tough subject matter, um, but there's this loving relationship, this um, pseudo father-daughter relationship at the heart of it. And um, we explore some very dark stuff in a journey, I hope, to the light. Um, I, I really want to emphasize that. I'm, I, I gotcha. I'm not going to let you down as a reader. If you come to this having suffered your own trauma, it's a journey to light places. And um, it's the art is incredible. I think in some way it's my it's some ways it's my best comics work could be my best work um, because it's from the heart for me too. And um, the color artist is Dervla Kelly, and okay. all these lovely russet, rusty Americana. Oh, um, I am so lucky. I I have been able to put things on the page in terms of my panel descriptions that I sometimes literally have said to um, Sally, I don't know if it's actually possible for you to get this feeling, for you to actually even convey what this scene is, and she's done it. Um, and I I'm so incredibly proud of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, we, we, so the, the, uh, the pre-orders um, for issue one are, are attached to this interview. And um, and you'll see on the imagery how amazing Sally's artwork actually looks for this book. Mm. And, and could you elaborate on working um, with the with the vaults for me, please, Paul? Because I know that what they're particularly known for is their high production design values, and they've done ex excellent horror, horror horror comics in the past, like these Savage Shores. Mm. But um, I, I know that you're having a good time working with these guys. Cause, so can you fill us in a bit? Well, the editorial process is quite extraordinary. They began with ethics. Um, they, the first, one of the first conversations we had was, is this your story to tell? You know, do you feel qualified to do this? And so I elaborated a bit about my own history. Um, and I love the fact that that's where we began. Um, and from there on, all the artistic parts of the process have been extraordinary. They've got an amazing publicity team. Their design sense is tremendous. Um, we were consulted all along the way, myself and Sally and Erdler, about um, you know, the publicity, about what the logo should look like. Um, we've had editorial there to prop us up and support us and to make good calls throughout. They're, they are an amazing company to work for. I mean, that's wonderful to hear. I, I, to be honest, given comic storied history, uh, when it comes to these matters, um, to, to begin any conversation about any comics publisher with the words, we started talking about ethics, that in itself seems to me is a pretty amazing thing. Oh, it is. Um, we, the, the industry is changing very fast, and thank goodness. Yeah. 
Well, quite here, here, quite quite rightly so. Yeah. Uh, can you can you elaborate a bit on your working relationship uh, with Sally and with Dervik? How does how how does that actually how does that play out for you? Um, well, basically, um, I've been able to cut more and more dialogue because uh, my descriptions are put straight on the page, often first time. And we're doing so much visual storytelling. Um, the scene that I um, asked for that um, I thought was impossible, I won't, um, no spoilers, I won't say what it is, but it was the splash page at the end of an issue where we had to indicate that something existed in the real world but was been, being exaggerated because of Jace's point of view. Um, so we had to both suggest that a thing was scary, but also every day, that she was seeing it differently to how everybody else would, would, be, would be seeing it. And this was also in the context of a sudden surprise, which we couldn't elaborate on <laughs> until next issue. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> and, and, and she tried it three different ways. That's a pretty I, tough brief. Yeah, she tried it three different ways, and I said, "You know, you're incredible, but we may have hit the point where this is actually beyond the ability of an artist to land." Yeah. And the fourth try, she did it. Ah, fantastic! Yeah, um, it, it's. I, I feel in such good hands. Yeah, no, I mean that. That that's what that's wonderful. The um, the. It, and when it comes to the book, it, uh, what's the what's the format going to be? Is it an ongoing? Is it a particular number of issues? We are one and done. We are done in six issues. Yeah. Okay. And then collected as as a graphic novel. Yeah. Um, it's it's a it's a proper novel. We have an yeah. ending inside. Right. Got it. So so it's there. There isn't room for more afterwards. You tell your whole story with a beginning and a middle and an end across the six issues. If it's a tremendous success. We may, uh, I haven't even talked about this with the vault, but there may be space for us to tell a different story with the same themes, maybe. Got it. Okay, okay. Mm. In the same universe or, or literally just, you know, as you do, say, American Horror Story, you know, take, take the same sensibility and apply it elsewhere. It, it's possible. I tell you what, we're having this conversation. This is the first time I've had this conversation. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, so, Paul, uh, for this book, and I'm mindful of the fact I don't want to ask you too many questions about the detail because I can see that the key to enjoying the narrative you guys have crafted is to actually just go into it and experience it. But what if you had any cultural touchstones that had sort of been playing around in your head when, 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 when you wrote this series? Can you share any of those with us? Well, we started off with everybody saying it's a werewolf story. Yeah. But it's not a wolf. Um, it's something much stranger than that. And um, it's, it's got some of the elements of a werewolf story in that it's about how one lets the beast out and about guilt. Um, David allows himself to be JC's weapon, basically because he's working off his own guilt for things he did in the past. And he only gets to be th that beast to human beings when it's a human being that they've decided to kill. Right, okay. And um, also, we very much interrogate that. You know, I don't think there are people in this world that it is okay to kill. Yeah. And um, JC currently feels that way. David is wavering. Yeah. Um, we flash back and forth between their past together, how they met, and right now. And it all comes to a crisis. And this, this shape is very much informed by, I, I keep saying Stephen King. Um, it, it's also, um, I'm, I'm very much reading current American um, uh, horror comics, which seem to have formed a little genre of their own in the last two years or so. There's a style of art which I see as very, um, very influenced by Bronze Age horror artists. I'm seeing Bernie Wrightson in there. I'm seeing Mike Plug. Um, uh, all of that um, wonderful line work in so many different places. And the vault have been right in the middle of that. And um, uh, so I had that kind of art style in my head when I went in. And Sally has brought that full on. 
Um, so, yeah, there's there's also strange um, influences like um, incredibly Rachel Smith's. Uh, uh, her cartoons are, she characterizes her depression as a big black dog, Barky, in her wonderful um, cartoons about her domestic everyday life. And Barky's terrifying every now and then. And so one of the beast's aspects, um, I, I put in a, a, into the script for, for Sally to see a picture of Barky and the picture of the um, rabbit gods from the movie of Watership Down. Yeah, right. Oh, oh well, <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm completely with you now in terms yeah. of, of, of the beast, scary. The beast sometimes is very real and very physical, yeah. and sometimes is very sketchy and surreal and not quite there. Yeah. And um, So, yes, that. Wow. Uh, I mean, I, I really can't wait to have the actual book in front of me and, uh, and read it. And, and, you know, on that note... Um, as we as we as we sprint towards the end of this ten minutes, what would you uh, like to leave the potential readers with who can order the book "I Walk with Monsters" issue one from um, the links attached to this interview? And it's well worth doing. Just check out the art; it's amazing. What 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 words would you like to leave everybody with, Paul? Um, if you've never experienced a horror book before, I think this might be a good first one. Um, because it kind of says to the reader, trust us. We're not going to betray these two leads who love each other so much. Um, but, and, and also we, we don't, we strongly suggest and strongly imply the awful things that, that happen to JC in her childhood, but we walk around them. Um, there's, no scene, there's no scenes of violence against women. There's no scenes of child abuse. But these things are solidly implied and we understand the situation that JC is in. Um, we, don't, we don't linger on the violence, what we linger on is the emotional violence. So if you're not somebody who reads horror comics, maybe this would be a good one. Yeah, I, 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 think, I, think, that's a, I think that's a great point to go out on. Um, thanks, thanks very much for sharing this uh, 10 minutes with, with us, Paul. Um, as I say, when you check out the links, you're going to be blown away by the art on this book. And the one thing I know is, yeah, knowing Paul's work, you're also going to be blown away by the words. So uh, you can pre-order it here. Um, great to see you, mate, as always. You take care Thank of you. yourself. And you can pre-order I Walk With Monsters right here. And I'm really looking forward to reading the book, man. Thank you so much. Take care, Paul. All the best. Bye-bye.